Awesome, great. So once you once you went through it all yourself, you quickly turned around and started helping other people. Yeah, I, through you know like learning contracts and paperwork. Not necessarily what I my desire is to help women get through you know, the, maybe specifically single moms, um, get through that part of their life. And whether it's in real estate or not, um, just the mentoring part was like, here, let me help you build your business and learn real estate and learn how to do contracts and everything. But my courses, like I really just wanna help women, um, no matter you know what they do, just get through that. Yeah, yeah. Like, is it, is this real and, and do people actually do this? And if it's so easy, why doesn't everybody do it? And well, like I get in my own head, like, you know, like the last year I struggled, that doesn't define me. I mean, so I'm, I always tell other people like, don't worry what people think they're not paying your bills. And then I need to practice what I preach though. Like I let that hold me back too. I feel like my community is like, oh, well, you didn't do that great last year. Well, I still overcame something. I just have to remember, I still overcame something and I'm, I'm still overcoming it and I can help other people. It's not about, it's not all about how many houses I sold last year, you know? It's almost like you have to be constantly educating people about where the market is. Yeah, no, I mean, because we assume that people know and they, they don't, they're not in, in it every single day like we are and so a lot of us just assume that you know they know and they really don't so yeah it's up to us to educate Joining me today for uh, another episode of Define Your Purpose is Sarah Cruz from Houston, Texas. And Sarah is a realtor, mentor, and course creator. Um, so Sarah, I'm, I'm really interested in the, um, the mentor and course creator part of your real estate legacy there, but how, how did you get into real estate to begin with? Uh <laughs> Well, thanks for having me on. Um, how I got started in real estate back, I mean, I graduated from college in 2006 and I lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I was having a hard time finding a job after I graduated and I just happened to land um, a job as a loan officer and for a company that is no longer around, uh, that's Countrywide Home Loans. And then um, kind of just, I moved to Houston later on, got into commercial real estate, property management, and then um, got married, had kids, stayed home for a little bit. And then I had to really hustle. I went through a divorce and, as, as a stay-at-home mom and um, really had to hustle. And I, real estate was what I knew best. I had gotten my real estate license, my residential real estate license, because um, I was going to go into a, a friend's property management company. I was going to help run it. And then um, that didn't pan out just because, I mean, I should have asked like, where was I going to be managing properties? And it was literally in the ghetto of Houston, like where you would need like security guards and, and I went away with it. But by the grace of God, like I had, that's why I got my real estate license and I needed it. And so I really, um, when I had my back up against the wall, I hustled and, um, that that's how I became a real estate agent. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> sometimes it's, sometimes it takes that, to, it takes that pressure to, it, it sucks when it's going on, but <laughs> no. And I give props to people that, you know, they, they're financially fine. They have a husband that makes money, but they still hustle real estate and they do really well at it. Um, 
I don't know if I would be where I am right now if it wasn't for that situation. If I didn't, you know, have to pay my mortgage, feed the kids, and um, I had to make it work. And so it was just, I hustled. I mean, it was a roller coaster. I was in pre foreclosure a couple of times. I would have a closing, I would catch up on my mortgage. And then it was just like, it was terrible. But I just kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And then all of a sudden I just had, you know, I just had deals closing and, you know, I could take a breath of fresh air. Wow. That, that must have been really amazing when you started having deals closing. You were like, finally. <laughs> yeah. And then you don't believe it because I think um, I somehow, I think just like a mediocre mindset kind of kept me from like going, you know, once I made, once I had a certain amount of money in my bank account, like I kind of, you know, let off the gas, which you should never do. And just in anything I say today isn't, um, I'm not whining or crying. I firmly believe that everything happens for us and not to us. But I went through a situation where I was a single mom. Uh, I still am a single mom with three kids. And I, I'm grateful for that because I, my mindset now, um, just everything that I've learned, perseverance, um, mindset, motivation, discipline, intensity, all of that. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I just, I'm so much further along now than I probably would have been if I, you know, just kept doing what I was doing and, you know, yeah. Yeah. Without the struggle, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, and not to say, I mean, I just went through this, you know, I, this last year was horrible and it's not because the market, it's not because, I mean, that, that definitely didn't help. The real estate market was horrible. Um, you know, we had half as many people purchasing homes, um, than before because the rates were up, the, media is scaring everybody. And, um, but I just, I kind of fell into, um, not a depression, but I was so worn out the end of 2022 and all of 2023, I was focusing on the wrong things. Like, um, you know, my ex-husband, he's not a good co-parent. He doesn't pay child support. He is a selfish, um, you know, like whether he shows up on his days or not, I never know. And so I folk, I took him to court and that was a waste of time, a waste of money. Um, they don't really do anything to people like that. And I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have focused on that. And I, I focused on some other businesses. I shouldn't have done that. So anyway, during that time, I wrote courses. I wrote a couple of courses for new real estate agents. That was like my therapy. I just, I rather have done that then, but I didn't, I had mindset issues and I never pushed it out, which I still have them. And I still, every day I get closer and closer, but um, I went back to the basics just so I could pay bills and, you know, sell real estate, do what I knew best and sell some houses get back on track. And then I feel like now I'm ready to maybe market those courses and everything. But yeah, like I, um, I've been in a, uh, position where I can attract agents. And so I've mentored them too. So I have a few agents I mentor and, um, the brokerage, the brokerage I was with compensated me for that. Awesome. Great. So once you've once you went through it all yourself, you quickly turned around and started helping other people. Yeah, I, through you know, like learning contracts and paperwork. Not necessarily what I my desire is to help women get through. You know, the maybe specifically single moms um, get through that part of their life. And whether it's in real estate or not, um, just the mentoring part was like, here, let me help you build your business and learn real estate and learn how to do contracts and everything. But my courses, 
Like, I really just want to help women, um, no matter, you know, what they do, just get through that. Great. Great. That's awesome. So it, you're, you're, maybe your niche might be uh, female realtors then, aspiring female realtors? Maybe. I just think um, any, any business, any entrepreneur, um, I mean, even if they had a W-2, I just, I feel like there's a lot, I, I just don't, if you've never been a single mom or a single parent, and I'm not talking about single dads that don't have their kids, you know, 98% of the time, you're, you're not a single parent. The primary parent that has the kids that are, they're fully responsible for that, um, for feeding them and taking care of them, getting to them to and from school. Those are the people I want to help. If, if you aren't, if you've never been in that position, you don't know what it's like and it's hard and it takes perseverance and it, it takes letting go of anger. Um, it takes focusing on the right things, not the wrong things. And, um, I, I really feel like God put me through what he put me through for a reason. Um, so that I could help other people. And I'm, I feel like I haven't started soon enough cause I just have problems. Like I need to work on my mindset every day to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is it, is this real? And, and do people actually do this? And if it's so easy, why doesn't everybody do it? And well, like I get in my own head, like, you know, like the last year I struggled, that doesn't define me. I mean, so I'm, I always tell other people like, don't worry what people think they're not paying your bills. And then I need to practice what I preach though. Like I let that hold me back too. So I feel like my community is like, oh, well, you didn't do that great last year. Well, I still overcame something. I just have to remember, I still overcame something and I'm, I'm still overcoming it and I can help other people. It's not about, it's not all about how many houses I sold last year, you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Your, your struggle is make, is what makes you authentic and, and real and have a story to, to other people. Thank you makes you more relatable. Um, yeah. And maybe I do, maybe I've heard before, um, you know, niche so tight that only you can fit in it and, you know, people will come. So maybe I do focus on single mom, real estate agents. I don't know. So. Uh, yeah. Well, I think part of that is you're, you're speaking to that person too. You want to speak directly to that, that one person who's in that situation. And I, I think there's a lot of power in that, you know, to be able to speak directly to somebody like that. that right. Do that so now. Like finding my target audience, I've just racked my brain. I'm like, oh, okay, who's my target audience? Who are they? What bothers them? And then finally mm -hmm. it occurred to me that I need to be talking to me back in 2015, 2016. Like I need to be talking to myself back then. So yeah it's all uh it all just evolves every day right <laughs> that's great that's awesome so you have more courses planned or, or maybe you could tell me a little bit more about your your course content you have right now okay what was i so i was thinking this morning so one that's already recorded and um i i was using click funnels now i'm going to use stand store um but my, I have a lease course. Uh, one of the things that kind of just fell into my lap as I um, was trying to get my foot in the door in real estate is working with investors. I just, and it was like, I would specifically find investors that wanted to buy, they wanted to purchase buy and holds. And I would take them to new construction because that is, I feel like that's quick equity. Um, you don't have maintenance. And so um, that really, I, I have a, quite a few investors in my portfolio that love new construction as buy and holds. And then, so when they purchase these buy and holds, I have several, um, they turn around and they list them for lease. And then I list them, every time a tenant moves out, I list them over and over again. And that has been a huge 
a lot of real estate agents turn their noses up at leases, but here's the deal is it is like it's quicker money than going and finding a client, nurturing them, um, helping them purchase a home. If you are struggling and trying to get, you know, trying to pay your bills as a new entrepreneur that's selling real estate, leases are a great opportunity. So my, um, I've done so many leases, I have a system down. And so I recorded it and it's less than a hundred bucks. It's super cheap. Um, but it's like you, and I tested out my own theories and my own systems in August. It's like, you know, earn $10,000, you know, in your, in one month with leases. And, and I did it. Like I teach them how to find those tenants and, and the, just it's like you once you find them at they're like ready to move when they start looking um so and then once you process that lease it's you get paid right away so it's what a great tip i mean real estate is such a competitive market to get started in i hear i mean it's that's a really great tip it sounds like <laughs> yeah just to get and then you're building your database with you know a lot of people are like well where do i buy leads i don't need to buy leads how about get paid to have to fill your database. So you're literally like making money to put pay people in your database because those tenants will purchase. And if you nurture them, that turns into um, sales for you later. But also while you're doing this lead generation for leases, you are lead generating for purchases too. It's- Set yourself up for later on with the relationships and all, I guess. Right. Right. And you're building trust and you're, you know, if you post on social media, you just build trust with your sphere and they start using you and, you know, it just starts to go, starts to go around. So um, that's one of my course. That was just like a little mini thing that I kind of recorded as a low ticket offer. And then my core course is um, just from getting your license to starting your business. It's kind of like filling the gap between getting your license and then hiring another coach. Like just this is what you need to do to get started. And then um, they can take it for Once they start making money, then they can go hire another coach. But it's just like, this is how I did it. Because a lot of people get their license. They don't know what to do. They don't know. They just, it doesn't get handed to you on a silver platter. Like you have to go work for it. So it's like mindset, um, what your day should look like and what you need to do for lead generation and stuff like that. Right. We well, mentioned working with investors too. I mean, that's, that's such an important skill these days. And I would imagine, especially in real estate, when you get into it, yeah, doing more of that or. <laughs> well, so in the beginning, um, I would work with anyone and not all investors are serious. They think they are. It sounds great in their head. And then, but then you bring them a great deal, like maybe for a flip and they want to sit on it for 48 hours and you cannot do that. Houston is too saturated. I, I'm sure the whole nation is saturated with investors. You cannot sit on it. And so I kind of learned how to, filter out the tire kickers and I just buy and holds were just better to, um, you know, I, I know what they're looking for. Um, I'm able to tell them, you know, how much it can rent for. This is, you know, this is how much we can get it for. This is how much it will rent for. This is the, you know, benefits of having the house here. This is like, you know, this is where, flight attendants, you know, pilots live, or maybe um, police officers, there's a lot of blue collar over here, you know, I'm able to tell them, you know, why they should purchase where they should purchase. And then not every builder will sell to investors. So I have those builders and I have those communities where I take them. So, and then I negotiate on their behalf on, you know, so they literally, it's turnkey. It makes a big difference when you know people. <laughs> yeah, when you when you know where to go, it's uh, cuts out a lot of legwork. So obviously, communities 
will get fully built out and then the builder moves anyway it, it's it's always changing so you just kind of have to keep your eye on everything but one of the things i could have done i shouldn't focus on what i could have done last year but like you know since rates were up i have a lot of cash investors and for some reason they didn't want to purchase either and that was the best time to purchase especially with cash because everyone was desperate to sell because there's no buyers out there and i should have spent more time educating the public on that um i just i wasn't in a great place and i was focusing on court stuff and um just lesson learned i just stay in my lane focus on myself my kids my production don't worry about ex-husband i can do it myself it's almost like you have to be constantly educating people about where the market is yeah no i mean because we assume that people know and they they don't they're not in in it every single day like we are and so a lot of us just assume that you know they know and they really don't so yeah it's up to us to educate the public and yeah so where is the hot the hot market going to be this year where in in houston or i mean what are you excited about do you have um maybe a lot of options coming up with different properties or um are you mostly just excited about your courses <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. So I do feel like the market's picking up um, either, you know, it's the word is that rates are dropping. Um, and I think whether they drop or not, I think people are tired of waiting to purchase. And so I've noticed a lot more people are looking. Um, I noticed a lot more sellers are looking to sell. So I think it's going to be, I think we're going to get back to normal, um, which I don't, normal to me is like before COVID it, you know, homes weren't flying off the market, but they weren't sitting for a long time if they were priced right. Um, and then I'm sure builder, I had noticed builders are already going back to, you know, their, in, the incentives that they used to provide. Um, the, this last year, 2023, they were providing a lot more incentives because we needed buyers. We needed to entice those buyers to purchase. Um, I think they've kind of, they're still providing incentives and a lot of builders will, but they're just not providing as much, but it's still super beneficial. Like I still recommend buying new construction because of that. Um, but there's builders that you know, they don't, some don't treat realtors well in normal markets. And so like, I noticed a lot of them going back to that. Um, you're suspect. They think you're just out to flip houses or something. No, they just, they, I mean, buyers just walk in the door. They don't, they don't need us. And honestly, sometimes I don't, I don't blame them because I think a lot of there's some real realtors that come in and they're overzealous and they can ruin the deal for builders. Like you have to like, don't look for all the bad, you know, things that are going on. Just make sure your clients are taken care of, keep them in, you know, legal, um, what's the word the, just make sure that they're going through the process and, you know, they get a good home in the end, but yeah. Um, I can see why some builders just don't want to work with us and, but there's others that treat us really well and we bring them lots of business and the world goes around. It's great. Yeah. I could see how getting too excited about things at the beginning would slow a lot of new realtors down and mess things up maybe. <laughs> yeah. You can't go in a house and just, you know, tear that builder apart. Like, oh my gosh, you know, the space board looks crooked or like, then go take your clients to the million dollar custom homes. Like, you know, you have to, there's a certain level of finesse between, you know, things and you got to realize, you know, what, what you're doing and how you're helping. So after you do enough back and forth with people, then you, you kind of start to realize how you should be kind of maintaining yourself then. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So yeah, 
yeah, I think the market's going to be picking up. And then as far as my courses, I just need to implement and take action. Get some more sales then? <laughs> On courses? Yeah. Yeah. That's ultimately what I want to do. Okay. Awesome. Great. I, I know that's a really great field. Uh, there's a, a lot of um, really successful real estate coaches too. So. <laughs> yeah. I, yes. I agree. I think there's some great people out there that provide a lot of value and I follow a lot of them too. Right. Right. Cool. Cool. I mean, how do your, how do your clients get in touch with you then? I mean, you, um, through your, your website, if someone wants to, um, the Houston property.com, is that your, um, yeah. So I got to make sure that that is, I just switched brokerages. I need to make sure that I managed that and I forward that, um, domain, but yeah, through LinkedIn, um, Sarah Cruz, Facebook, Instagram, Sarah Cruz, real estate. Yeah. And then I have a link tree. Um, I think you can just go and search Sarah Cruz. It's S A R A H C as in cat R U S E. Okay. Sure. Houston area. <laughs> Great. Great. Awesome. So, um, so what are you most excited about coming up this year? I am. Well, I, I really, I do. I'm super grateful for everything that I've been through. I pray and I thank God every day. Like I, there's times where I was worried about, you know, where I was ending up. Like, what should I go get a W2? What do I need to do? And I just, my bills were paid. I just, I don't know. It's just, I live a good life. I'm super grateful. I have a roof over my head and I've learned so much. And I just, I look forward to, um, getting that off the ground. I'm not a real estate coach. I am. But how you fit it all in. I know that I can do, if I plan it well, I, I can run multiple businesses. Um, it's the, and I think that's why it's taken me so long to launch my courses. It's not just mindset. It is, I just have not made a good plan yet. So, but you know, there's just so many things going on in my brain and so many things that I want to do. I finally just had to say, okay, I need to focus on doing what I do best and sell real estate so I can pay my bills. And then I'm going to add my courses and marketing those to that. And then once I get that down, which will probably, you know, if I have any kinks to work out or anything, and then if I want to add anything after that, I'll add, but, um, I love helping people. I just, I'm hoping that I can work myself out of production and actually help women and, you know, getting through. Friday is international women's day, actually. <laughs> This Friday? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Hmm. Okay. Maybe I can tie that in somehow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something to think about, I guess. Yeah. I didn't know that. Do you yeah, keep all your I mean, holidays on a calendar? Um, no. Well, I just happen to be in a, um, on the board of an organization that's celebrating um, Spark Life International. Um, we work to prevent trafficking and um, enable women and children in Ghana and Detroit. Um, so cool group. You might be interested in checking out. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I would love more information on that. Great. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's on, um, on my, my LinkedIn page there. You can, this is the first place to look. Um, we have a really great website too. Well, I'd, I'd love to have a, um, a follow-up conversation with you sometime too, you know, maybe we'll, Check, have another check-in, um, you know, during the summer or something like that after a couple months and see how you're doing. <laughs> that sounds good. I think, um, I think everything happens for a reason, connections and I don't know, maybe we'll be working together. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be great. I'd, I'd love to try to help you, um, build out your, your business and your courses and all that and try to be a, a good influence and a, 
you know, I, I try to help everybody I meet and I love making friends and working with people. Yeah. Collaborating. Good. <laughs> Can do so much through collaboration. It's amazing. I think so too. I think it's, um, I think really good things happen on a team effort. And that's one of the things I learned is like, I, I was trying to do everything myself and it's okay to partner up with people. It's okay to ask for help and support. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important. <laughs> Definitely. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to, to speak with me today, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And, um, uh, I'll be in touch with the, with the recording of, um, of this session. So, um, definitely want to wish you best of luck with, with everything you got going on right now and we'll be in touch soon. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Carl. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Take care. Bye.